So at this point we've got our settings, our store settings set up, and we've also got an idea of uh, how we're going to categorize and organize things. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually start setting this up. So the first thing that I would recommend, now that we've got an idea, we can do it before or after, but it, I think it's kind of a good idea to do it before. I want to create the categories, the three categories, and I want to create the one tag first. So under our menu item of products, notice we have products, that will list all your products. Add new, we will add, be able to add a new product. Product tags, we can add or create or rename tags. Categories, add or create or rename categories. We'll talk about variations, of course, and coupons. So let's hover over products and let's go to categories first. The default product category is called product category, which is pretty not useful. <laughs> so um, on the left side, we've got name and slug and parent and description. The name is how it appears on your site, and the slug is URL friendly. It, it already uh, it often already just writes itself after you write the name up there, so you don't have to worry about that, really. But let's say we'll start off with cakes. So under name, cakes. You don't have to write anything under slug. It'll write it itself in a moment. Parent. We don't have, well, we have the product category, but parent is going to be related to let's say we've got cakes but then we've got subcategories of cakes such as sugar-free and ones that taste good so uh, those are the two main subcategories the good ones and the good for you so we're not going to do any, any child and parent categories at the moment, but we could. Um, so on parent, we'll put none. Description. is not prominent by default, however, some themes may show it. So I will write something here. Handmade, gluten-free cakes. Presentation settings. Um, here we have a thumbnail that we can use for the category. We've got product display, default view, or list or grid, but we haven't bought the gold cart. And if we want the thumbnails to be a particular size, instead of the ones in the settings screen, we can do that. Change its width and height. If I only want to sell a particular product to a particular market, let's say I have a product that is that is, that really should only be sold in one particular country, I can I can do that. Or I can exclude. <clears throat> let's say I want it sold everywhere except Albania. So obviously I would select all and not select Albania. Category requires additional checkout form fields. Uh, if we had set up extra form fields, this is one of the places where it might show up. We've only got one, one form, one checkout form. Address to calculate shipping with, which the default is shipping address instead of billing. So that's fine. Click Add New Product. Now at the top it shows we've got a brand new category, cakes. So we'll do pies. No parent. Quick description. Our delicious. Pies come in two varieties, six inch 
and 12 each. Then save that, and then we'll do cookies. So then create your cookie category, give it any description you'd like. <clears throat> but now we've got three categories in the default one. If I misspelled cookies or anything like that, notice you can hover over any product category and we have quick edit and edit. Quick edit is often the best one because if you click quick edit, then it says, okay, change it. The regular edit will let you go back and edit the description and other features. <clears throat> What's useful about this category screen as well is that as you start populating your store, this will list on the right side, your count. So it'll tell you you've got seven items in cakes, three in cookies, and twelve in pies. And if you actually click on a number, it will then in WordPress dashboard display all of those products at once. Instead of all your 40 products, it'll display just those 12. All right, let's then head over to product tags. Click on product tags, and we'll add the one product we have in mind at the moment. So under product menu item, product tags. Notice the product tag does not have a parent child structure. So it's just the actual tag, it's, it doesn't have any hierarchy. Or as I said with categories, we can have cakes as the parent, and then subcategories are sugar-free, so, you know, tastes good, or good for you. You know, we can have those two, those two subcategories of cakes. We can't have that for tags. That's okay, so we'll have chocolate. Chocolate is a, is a tag that could then be applied to chocolate cookies, chocolate pies, chocolate cakes. No. <laughs> One reason why it might be useful is that uh, if your theme does display it, then it gets displayed, and then that's sort of a little bit of meta tags and such for your SEO. So the more your the more the search engines know about your site, the better. Okay, the last little bit of setup is variations. Remember in my concept of products over here, I also have variations. This one's a little weird to, to think about without actual products. But notice we can see here illustrated chocolate chip. 
cookies, sugar cookies. They're going to be sold in groups of 3, 6, 12, or 24. So what would you, what, what word would you call these groups right here? Quantity, sure. Um, so serving size or whatever, whatever term. So quantity, amount, serving size, batch, whatever. So we need to think of a name that would encompass that. So think about also variations for t-shirts. The variations would be large, medium, small, obviously sizes. So that name of that group of variables would be size. We need to think of a name of variables for this. Then once that name is uh, chosen, then we can say 3 of that, 6 of that, 12 of it, 24 of it, etc. So I'm going to call it batch size. Might not be the best name, but we can change it later, just to, just to try it. So let's go over to the variations screen under products. Variations allow you to create options for your products. For example, if you're selling t-shirts, they will have a size option. You can create this as a variation. Size will be the, the, the variation set name, and it will be a new variant set. So a variation set name. That's the name of, the, of the, what those things are. Batch size, t-shirt size, etc. You will then create variants, which are the small, medium, and large, which will have the variation set of size. Once you have made your set, you can use the table on the right to manage them. Edit, delete. You will also you will be able to order your variations by dragging and dropping them within your variation set. So by default, it's going to be alphabetical. So let's say we had large, extra large, and small. So alphabetically, it would be extra large, large, and small. E. Uh, L, S. But if I want it small, large, and extra large, I can rearrange it, dragging and dropping in the screen here. So each size is, is, is its own variation. Each size is a variant, which is part of a variation set. Each size. So large, small, and medium are variants, and they're inside of a variation set or group. So first it asks, okay, what would you like? I would like a new variation set. So I'm going to say that the name is batch. A batch of 3, a batch of 6, a batch of 12. And also, again, we'll, this will, we'll, it'll be more obvious when we create the product, but we'll have a product screen of chocolate chip cookies. And then there'll be a little box that says batch. And it'll say three cookies, six cookies, twelve cookies. So we're going to make that a drop down? Yes. Okay. And then description is optional, so I will leave that blank. Variation price. You can list a default price here. You can list a regular price, differential price, or even a percentage. Now, what I would say about this is that this is useful because there could be a glitch. I have experienced it one time in that there was that tortilla soup product that was being sold, and that was 20 ounces and 10 ounces. And before you select 10 or 20, there's a default, which is nothing, which is make a selection. And so the glitch was that if someone had added to cart before selecting a variation, the price was zero, because we had never set a base price right there. Now that's a glitch, because it shouldn't happen. It should give you a warning that says, please select 10 ounce, 20 ounce. But there was that glitch, and now I'm paranoid, so I always set a variation base price, just in case. I don't want to sell products for free. So we're going to assume that the base price is always going to be the three cookies. So if they forget to select three cookies, they will still be charged for three cookies. They should not be charged without them selecting. 
but just in case they are. So you tell me, what's a good price for three cookies? $12. With uh, with the truffle oil, right? And gold shavings? So we'll see. Now for variation prices, like say the triple X t-shirt is two dollars more. Mm -hmm. Is that what you would add it on there or no? No, this is only for the most basic price. In a moment, once we add the variation set, when we add the variant of triple extra large, that's when it'll say plus two. But let's say just for our most basic cookies, three dollars. One dollar per cookie, they're that good. So the, the most basic is three dollars. Let's add the new variation. Um, so we've got batch. The most basic price is three dollars. So now, under parent, we select batch because we've already created that variant set. And under name, we will say three cookies. So one of the possibilities to select is from pecan, uh, from chocolate chip cookies, is three cookies. The basic price we said was three dollars. So we've got we can set a price, a differential price, or a percent. We know that three cookies is always three dollars. So if we put nothing here, it'll go to three dollars. But just to be obvious, I'll also put three. Three cookies, three dollars. Add new variation. So now the top here shows the drop down box will be called batch, and then one of the first item, the first item will be three cookies. Let's do the next one. Parent is still batch. Now we've got six cookies. If three cookies cost me three dollars, it might behoove you to you know, to entice people to spend more. So instead of six co cookies costing six dollars, maybe they cost five fifty. So down on the price here, variation price five fifty. You're gonna see. Oh, I can get six whole cookies for only five fifty. So if someone were to select six chocolate chip cookies, it only costs five fifty. The next one. Twelve cookies. do a little bit more discount, or obviously just whatever prices you want, but let's say $11 for 12 cookies, so they save a whole dollar, and that's sort of enticing them a little bit. Um, you know, I was only going to buy three cookies, but if I buy 12 of them, you know, make it 10, otherwise I'm not saving anything over six. That's why I'm bad at math, so. Is 10, do you guys think $10 is better than 11 Maybe? Twelve dollars? Ten? Okay. Survey says ten. Yeah, because if, uh, if, you know, they, they buy, if they get three of, if they get four of the three ones, that's twelve, uh, I don't know, math. But, um, yeah, maybe ten dollars works better. So we can, if you've already saved it, all you need to do is hover over right here on the right side and click the edit button. Obviously, if we wanted to incorporate more math and so forth, we can do differential price. So if your default price, let's say we are dealing with, with t-shirts. All t-shirts, small, medium, and large, cost $5. But extra large is an extra dollar, and extra, extra large is extra $2. So instead of hard coding or, or writing 5, 5, 5, 5, 7, and 12, I can just add plus 1, 
plus two, and it'll add two dollars to whatever the base price is. Because maybe in the future, the price of my wool has gone up. So I don't want to go in and make seven changes. I just make a change to the default base price. In the default base, I'm going to add the two dollars. And therefore here, when I've got it plus one, it'll automatically then calculate itself. Not everyone needs variations. They could be complex. I can tell you over for that Texcoco site, that is, that is a bit complicated because they, uh, they have two variations. They have tacos. Grilled tacos, soft tacos. That's one variation. Same price, but different styles. And then you've got rib meat, um, I don't know, leg meat, brain, and so forth. So soft and tripe, soft and rib meat, etc. So two dimensions of variations. Here it's just one dimension in our case. And notice this will apply to any kind of cookie. It will apply to the pecan pie, pecan cookies, to the sugar cookies, to the snickerdoodles, to the rainbow cookies, etc. They all use the same concept. It's going to be batches of cookies, and they're all they all cost the same. The you know the those I don't know what they're called, but those cookies that are like alternating checkerboard square cookies, those might be more expensive because they are more complex to make. So I would make a brand new variation set and price them accordingly. Can you name the variation set also batch? I think you could. Internally, the slug will call it batch 2. And then when you are when you have the product, it will just simply show batch or batch, which is confusing. But then you select the right one and all the prices populate. All right, so now we've got all of that. Categories, tags, variations. Now let's make a product. How do you change that one? Like say you want to create it from a first. We're gonna change that in the in the part when we actually attach it to a oh. product. So the drag and drop here doesn't actually do anything. No, drag and drop here just does a, a, a select. No, drag and drop in the. Huh. Uh, grab it outside of. Don't grab the name. Grab just the space next to it. Yeah. Which web browser are you in? I am in Internet Explorer. Uh, I don't know. I'm not seeing it. But I know for another... Is it actually rearranging it? Yep. Hmm. Beautiful. So, um, I, also on the next screen we can do it, but... Uh, so here we'll... We've got our basic setups. Okay. Now, we don't have any products yet, so finally, let's add a product. Under the products menu item, select Add New. The first one that we will work with is Birthday Cake. So up on the uh, product name up here, enter product title, we'll write Birthday Cake. We have a spot for a description. I'm not going to write anything meaningful. Let's just write something. And here, of course, we could have bold, italics, pictures, whatever. Let's say we've got something. On the right. Just product? Huh? Birthday cake. So then uh, we've got publish on the top right. Don't do that yet. We've got product tags. So uh, under product tag, uh, as, as you start writing chocolate, it'll see that we've got a tag called chocolate. So start writing chocolate, and then select chocolate. You want to tag birthday cake chocolate or chocolate cake chocolate? Oh, wait a minute. No, that's right. 
I was getting ahead of it. But we don't have any we don't have any tags for birthday cake. Yes, yeah, so nothing on chocolate. Nothing on tag yet. Okay, product categories. Here we go. So notice we can activate more than one, but in this case only cake works. Next to that, we've got featured image. That's going to depend on your theme, how that image is used. So what I'm going to do is let's select a picture. Um, I'm just going to borrow a picture from my computer. Obviously, what would be better is that we could do a search, find a picture of a chocolate cake, and add it. But I'm not going to go that far. You can do that if you want. What I'm going to do is go to set featured image. I will go to Upload File, Select File, on the left side scroll all the way to the top, go to Pictures, under the Libraries, and then sample picture. <coughs> Obviously nothing is quite birthday cake-like in there, just grab a picture. So it's under the pictures, in the libraries, sample pictures. So I selected the koala and select set featured image. Now that picture is a rectangle. Remember we've got these thumbnails, so we'll see how this looks. Uh, a lot of the times in WordPress, when you're dealing with different themes and plugins and such, you don't know exactly what it looks like until you try it. So that's why I'm just going to put this picture in and see what it looks like. Further down, we've got product pricing. Price and sale price. So, um, my cakes, I'm going to say they are $20. There's a sale price. So let's say this is on sale, and for the moment it's $18. So what would happen is that on screen, it would have the price of $20 crossed out, and it would say $18. i am not going to do sales yet, but sales is, is there, and very easily we can add those prices change them and such. We can add a currency option, so if we're selling to different countries, we can say how much it costs in that other country. And if we're doing quantity discounts, we have that as well. You know, seven or more of them, and they'll each cost whatever. But I'm not going to do that either. So we can do quantity discounts. This is also a, uni a very unique one that most people will not use. Purchase as a donation. So you can sell real products, vi virtual products, <coughs> services, and so forth, donations. Stock inventory. SKU, the stock keeping unit. This is just some code that you invent, which is optional, for you to keep track of the product. Like, let's say, uh, internally in the kitchen, when the order comes in for a 158, well, that means birthday cake. So whatever stock keeping unit system that you have, you can add here, which is optional. But let's say um, all cakes are going to be CK-something, CK01. That's the internal code that this is a cake, it's a birthday cake, 01. When I do the, um, the wedding cake, it would be CK02, or whatever system you want to use to keep track of it all. And you don't even have to put anything there if you don't want. You can activate limited stock and say, well, there's only 10 of them. 
and when stock re reduces to zero, unpublish from the website, so don't let that be sold anymore. If you don't turn that on, the product will still be there, but it will say sold out, which is kind of good because that could entice people, look at what I missed out on. This price used to be on sale, maybe I'll come back and they'll have more. Maybe I'll contact the, the, um, the company on their contact form and request, can you make more of that? And I want to know when I reach zero. So if you turn that on, you will get an email when those run out. So I don't have limited stock of this. I can make a cake whenever I want. So I won't use limited stock, but if you had limited stock, that's that stuff there. It pretty much makes sense. Could you set it to, let's say, you're selling in, in high volume, um, the things that you're selling are flying out of the door, you sell thousands a day. You set that when stock reduces to, let's say, 100 or something like that? Is there any way of that? No, unfortunately, it's just down to the, to the you know, when, when it reaches zero. There's no extra logic about that that would require custom programming. Now yours is taxes on it. I had taxes enabled. And it's a weird because it says product is tax exempt or it says taxable amount. And it says taxable amount in your currency, not percentage of price. Let me get back to that. I will activate my tax in a little bit and then I can okay. talk about it. But uh, yeah, that's why I'm saying that. That's why sometimes people just don't even use it because it is complex. Okay, so that's my that's stuff on the right side. Let me back up to the top and go into the center column. This is the WordPress SEO by Yoast. Um, I think I've mentioned it briefly here and there, specifically on part one of the class. But if you take the SEO class, we go into much more detail about this plugin. In short, what I can say here is um, this is this this extra plugin helps you customize your screen so that it's looks better on a search result on, on Yahoo, on Google, on Bing. And so if you take the class we go into more detail, but what I would recommend for you is this is the place where you can edit the title. This is how it would appear on search. Birthday Cake, Victor's Bakery. That's a pretty good title. If I wanted to say something like Birthday Cakes for All Occasions, that's what will appear on a search result. And then I can write in a description here. So what we're editing here is using a plugin. It doesn't come built into WordPress. That was our Yoast, our WordPress SEO plugin by Yoast. If we want it to be found by a particular keyword or phrase, I've got a spot right here. This attaches to an actual Google search. I can type birthday cake. So it's suggestions. Birthday cake San Diego, birthday cake shot, birthday cake recipe, birthday cake Rihanna, birthday cake lyrics. So this is these are some previews of hot searches that are being done for that. Birthday cake San Diego. And then, so, how many cakes from our kitchen to yours in San Diego? And it tells me how much space I have to write here, because if you write too much, it gets cut off. And when it gets cut off, it will cut off your last words in mid-thought. Like that. So if this is the keyword I think that my customers will search for, notice I've got those words in my description here. After I click Publish or Save Draft, the plugin will further analyze my page for how well it is optimized. Again, in the SEO class I go into more detail. If you want some more help individually, we can talk about it. 
but in the SEO class we craft this even more because we want to have a strong message, good keywords, long tail keywords, a call to action, all of this complex stuff. It's out of our scope at the moment. Going down, here we have variations. We don't have any variations for this product, so we'll skip it, but here's how we would add variations. It also needs more setup, we'll get back to it. Product delivery, shipping. Product will not be shipped to customer. And if it is being shipped, well, did we set that up with weight or dimensions, or are we doing a flat rate? If we don't activate any of this, it will use the UPS or the USPS or you know FedEx or whatever we've got. If we change any of these and add it, then it would want to use the, the flat rate fees or the or the weight fees. So we won't change anything here. Notice we've got a tab here, download. If this is a downloadable product, so an MP3 song, a JPEG photo, a PDF recipe, maybe I'm selling recipes, so I can upload the uh, I can upload the actual file here, and then I can sell a virtual good. And then lastly here, we've got something that is not that common, but we've got external link. I did do this for a client where they were, a, they were an author, and they were selling some of their books, you know, real paperbacks, that they had printed, that they had boxes in their garage, and they had some that were digital books that they were selling through Amazon. So here, we would then create their product and put in their Amazon link, And on this store here, it would display the picture, description, and everything. And then on the text, they would sit on the button when they're ready to buy it, it would say buy now on Amazon. So someone would click on that and it would take them to Amazon to this link instead of through the PayPal processor because we're saying the product is actually at an external site. And again, it doesn't um, apply to most people. We have here product details, image gallery. If you want to display four angles of your product, you can add more pictures in an image gallery. We have also a short description, which are optional and they apply to your different themes. Again, I don't know exactly how this will look on my theme, so just for testing it out, I'll write short description goes here. I don't know where exactly my theme will show. Sometimes it shows right under your thumbnail, sometimes it shows you know on the side with a drop down button, it depends on your theme. Personalization. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message on a single product page. So if I want someone to write, Happy Birthday Billy, I can have a little box there that would be useful for this product. You can even go as far as having it that a person can upload a picture. Maybe I'm my cake business here can draw whatever you send us. So if you if you upload a picture of the birthday girl, then we will hand frost it. Maybe to play with that one for a moment, we can turn this on and off whenever we want. Remember, this is being applied per product, uh, per product. So I'm going to select users can upload images on single product page. So I'll click on that, and now we've set ourselves up with everything for a particular product, except for a very good uh, description. There's a lot of nuance, isn't there? Let's click Publish.
and to actually see the result let's visit site let's click on product products page I don't like that name but we'll change it later I want to call it something like you know the kitchen so products page click on that put this here products page I want to change that as well we can birthday cake there's that there's that description text that we wrote there's the thumbnail it's small but if you hover your mouse over the picture click on it it's nice and big <coughs> more details if you click on that there's a short description that's how this theme shows it quantity five one whatever price twenty dollars no shipping because I haven't I don't have that fully set up if you click on the the title of the product it goes to a page that focuses on that one product notice what it did was it took my featured image picture and put it nice and big at the top and the thumbnail there's the description the short description is now shown here without an extra read more personalize your product complete this form to include a personalized message I wanted to upload a picture of Billy I can upload it from this screen I can add to cart or the previous screen I'm going to click here add to cart how come my drop downs didn't show any size or we haven't added variations. Oh, okay. I mentioned we were going to, but we haven't added it. Okay. I noticed something here. We'll address it in a moment. But I'm looking at the product page itself. I've, I'm looking at that individual product. Um, if you notice the address bar, localhost, WordPress, products page cakes birthday cake that's good it's giving me an organization the search engines like that that's part of the permalinks if we hadn't done that it would simply say localhost slash wordpress slash p498 just an entry in the database also what I saw odd here was if I click add to cart it doesn't give me that fancy uh, add to cart thing that I said to add so we need to build in an, a, a redundancy in a moment. I, if you go back to the product page, yours is not doing. You just had a birthday cake. Your cake couldn't check out from the gallery. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's not adding it. It's not showing it to me in my product page, but it will show it to me if I'm on the top level. If I'm here on the list of all products and I click Add to Cart, then it shows. So we're going to need to make it show on both screens. In, in Internet Explorer, file is working as well. So if you did see that, great. If not, for the moment, it's not quite there. We're, we're still going to edit it, of course. But here it popped up. Continue shopping. Go to cart. I'm going to click go to checkout. Do if you have any control of how that looks? Because that looks, the way that box is, it kind of looks crappy. Yeah, the underline on the birthday cake. <laughs> the, um, this underline can be removed by changing that option in the settings about link title. Remember there was link title goes to products, yes or no? Right now it's set to yes. No, I think it was disable link and title. Remember that I said if you put yes, that'll not be clickable. If you leave it on no, it will be clickable. So yeah, that's annoying. This little box here, yes. Uh, I mean, if you wanted, again, this would be something that you would do in CSS or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go ahead and like change the font or the way that it actually looked. Yeah. So the nuclear option is to remove that in the setting, and then you have no more underline. But then you, it's not clickable anymore. To really remove it, it would be through CSS editing the code, the HTML code. Uh, so that's one way to edit that. This box itself also doesn't look that nice. And in order to edit that, that also would be required to edit the code. There's the no. Shopping cart looks overwhelmed by the one. Like I wouldn't recommend it. 
it's amazing that that's what it looks like. But they wouldn't have it. So I'm going to go to checkout. And so I added these different items. And then we've got what is the product, its thumbnail, the link. If I want more than that, oops, I added more than one. I want to remove one. That's pretty easy. There's the price of that. Total. Again, part of what's the way things are going to look is dependent on the theme. But then we've got um, the, the shipping. Like, like the word shipping broken up on multiple lines or so forth. It might depend on your browser also. Most likely your theme also because it, it uses this wide sidebar. And then there's a part about um, enter your email address. Um, this, uh, if they've got an account and they enter the email address, it'll show their picture, so that's cool. And there's the billing. Remember, we have the option to change the text. Your billing and contact details. If you don't want it to say that, we can easily edit it. These are the items that are required shipping address if I don't want them to type it all again same as billing address and it fills in on day one of this month we set some terms and conditions so notice you can't proceed until someone agrees to that and if you click on that that would it would show the there it would show that shipping uh, that terms and conditions text since we're using PayPal why would we need billing information Because uh, you you still need to decide if you're going to be using um, PayPal's shipping system or your own. You can ship stuff through PayPal. You can ship stuff yourself. So if you don't want this shipping... No, no, you have your shipping. I'm wondering why I need the billing information. They could be different. I could be billed at the company address, but I could ship it to my house, or vice versa. I could buy something for the office. I could buy these this batch of cookies from my house, so I'm, ship, I'm billing it to my own card, but then I'm shipping it to the office. I see what she's saying, though. It, 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 even if it's different, if PayPal is the one handling all the money, mm -hmm. why do you need to have their billing information as well? Like, can't you just say, here's my, you know, ship it here, but click here and enter all your stuff on PayPal for Well, the default will show you both, but remember we can always go back to our checkout form in the settings and not show any of that, any of those fields. So we can go back to the form and turn off everything regarding the section you don't want. And if that were all fully set up, eventually then it would say pay with PayPal. It would take me to PayPal, and then I could finish the order. We can't do that, of course, but um, that would be the, the, next, uh, the next step. So we've done this, uh, these variety of options for setup, and then we have the, the price itself, the product itself, that is. And then when you have a fully functional checkout cart and, then e and a PayPal set up through your email and such, you're ready. You're ready to sell the products. There's still things like dealing with returns, unhappy customers, taxes still, and that sort of thing. But um, out of the box, pretty quickly, we can create this shopping cart, maybe choose a better theme. This one's way too basic, I think. And um, 
we're ready to sell products. I tried to update the quantity and I can't do it. I can remove it, but I can't make it a So there's a few things still left to do and such, but we're coming to the end of the day. What I want to do now is back up the site, because we've done a lot of hard work today. I don't want to have to redo all of those settings. We're going to back up the site together, and then we're going to wrap it up for the moment. When we come back next time, we will add more products, because remember, we've still got to add variations, and we've still got to add tags and all of that. We'll go on and do that. So uh, let's talk about backing up the site one more time. I'll give you that link so that you can start looking at setting up a PayPal account, but most people have already done it, so um, you might not quite need it. Let's back up our site. Remember, we go back to our dashboard. We back up via the duplicator plugin, so hover over the duplicator menu item, and we'll go to Packages. We have no packages at the moment, so we will select here on the top right, Create New. This gives us a gives us uh, the date of our latest um, plugin archive and so we can change that if we'd like as I said before I recommend adding a note we'll add a note here we'll say uh, after all store settings have been set Categories added, or I'll say added categories, tags, variations. Added one product, to do add more products. We'll click Next. I don't remember the exact size, but now our site is 60 megabytes. I think it might have been about 50 or maybe 40. So more complexity to the site with this uh, plug-in. Um, and there, everything looks good, so we'll click Build. And once that's done, I will click on each of those items so that I can save them to my flash drive and take it with me. As I've said previously, I like to create a folder with the date. And those two items that it gave me, I put them in that folder, and that's what I take with me on my USB, and that's what I'll put into the network folder. Question?
teaching this class how many bakeries do you sell? A dozen, a baker's dozen. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the moment. When we come back, we'll add more products and variations and deal with other techniques and tricks and here and there and see what else we do. And we'll be on our way to having our own storefront in WordPress.